My name is Meher, Meher Karmaria. I'm from India and I'm currently studying in Lviv. I'm a fifth year medical student in Ukraine. My name is Shivam Gupta and I'm 23 and I'm in fifth year of medical college in Lviv Danilo Helisky Medical University. <laughs> yeah, my name is Divyanshi Arya. That's full name. They call me Divi over here. And I am a medical student studying in the fifth year and our course is above six years, so I'm, I have one year left. The thing is that in my family, like, there are no close doctors or there are no, there's nobody working in the medical profession. And mm. there was this time in my family when my grandmother was very sick and my dad had to run around behind a lot of doctors, not knowing what exactly is going on with her. So that made him also motivated like that I should get into a medical profession and I was interested in this field. Like it's an interesting <coughs> field, like you get to do a lot of innovative stuff I would say. I mean, and it's very, it keeps on updating and it's very interesting. So that's why I decided to pursue medicine. I like I really wanted to be like a guide or a help in my family basically to be able to help them in times that they need a doctor. What brought me to medicine? Uh, the simplest answer I could give you is I didn't like maths. <laughs> simplest one and uh, I like biology and I like system. It's uh, I could relate to nicely. I could imagine them how the systems are going on and I like it. It's fun. It's a very fulfilling uh, feeling that I get when I know I can help this guy and uh, just by having that knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> you see, uh, so it's actually kind of very, very, very non, uh, how do you say? Not genuine. <laughs> no, no, not nature, not genuine. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you exactly how it started. So I was when I was in tenth, I was too much into arts. I was doing all the artistic shit, everything, from this to that, everything. And my parents were like, "Why are you doing this? If you want to become something, you have to study for it. You can't do much in this." And so I thought, okay, then what do I do? You take biology, they have all the drawings and diagrams, you draw that, you, ha you, you can study, you can draw. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I hate maths, <laughs> I hate maths, I used to fail in maths, that is truth, I used to fail in maths. <laughs> so they thought that you are going nowhere, if you don't know maths, you can't go anywhere, in any, in any stream you can't go, so you have to take biology. So I took biology, I did my diagrams and yeah, that's how it started. But then when I when I kept studying biology, when I kept studying chemistry, I still, know, still don't like physics. But uh, these two subjects, I, they caught me thinking that uh, once I'm into something, I like it. I want to do it more. So I kept wanting to do it more and that's how I thought that, okay, I can do this. Let's do this. So like in India to get into a medical college you need to give an exam called NEET and based on your marks you get into various colleges like government or private. So I didn't get into any of those and private is very expensive so Ukraine was a good option to pursue medicine. See uh, I had uh, two three countries in my mind. I had Philippines, I had Nepal and uh, Ukraine and Russia. So, Ukraine was uh, the most uh, suitable and uh, the, I wouldn't say ideal, but something that I, it just made my mind. Like, I look at the brochure uh, that they had on their website, what are they giving, which courses they have. And I was going through that and I look around the surroundings and uh, I read a few reviews there from that thing and I was like okay and it uh, Lviv 
was weird because it was mostly I think it looked European more and yeah I was like I wanted to study somewhere like that so yes I told them at the last week I'm going so they were like surprised why why are you going and all and like nah I'm just off for six years and I'm gonna come back it's gonna be all right six years are like so they're gonna fly and they did fly and yeah they were like surprised then I used to go back to India after one year or one and a half year they were like oh how many years more left I was like this much was like okay fine come back I, my knees are hurting my elbows are hurting you're gonna fix them I was like nah <laughs> not there yet but soon why Ukraine? Because I got less marks for my entrance exams in India and the marks that I got for, I, I could only get a private college for it and the fees for private college is not for me. <laughs> I can't do it. And uh, I, I joined uh, BSc Forensics along with me. I took a drop year I joined BSc Forensics for um, like for one year I did that and I thought that I could do it but I, I didn't feel quite at the attachment towards it so left it uh, had another drop year tried again got good marks but still it was not enough for a government college and the fees again the problem with the fees so Mm, then I went to various consultations, I talked about it, they suggested Russia, they suggested China. With China there was a problem for the food. They gave, they gave cockroaches, <laughs> lizards and everything. It's all my mom. That's what she heard. She said, you are not going there. I'm like, okay. In Russia, I, th I felt, I felt, uh, because I grew up watching mob stories <laughs> and mostly gangs and other Russians. <laughs> so I, I was, I was very naive when I came here and I thought that I'll, I am definitely getting kidnapped in Russia. <laughs> They're going to extort me or something. So I thought, no, I can't go there. Then... Then it was Ukraine and there was this one consultancy that I came through. My father went there and they impressed him with their knowledge of Ukraine and Lviv, you know, our university. And our university is actually very good that I came to know much later in my life, but <laughs> that happened. <laughs> so so I came I came to Ukraine. It's it's much feasible for me. It's like what 30 40 percent of the fees here uh, I mean 30 40 percent of what they ask in the private college in India hmm. so it's it's that's the Ukraine is the answer mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very beautiful it's very beautiful actually I have uh, this experience like I know people have been going out to other countries Europe in Europe because of the war situation they are going and exploring and stuff but I st when I came I felt like no I don't need I don't really need much experience because I, I have not explored Lavi completely so I never quite felt left out that oh my friends are roaming other countries and I have not gone anywhere or something like that I just I just felt like oh, yeah this is very nice homely place I like it and it's been five years it's, this is my second home now <laughs> so I like it here and the people are also nice. Earlier I felt like they were not nice, but it's me. It's my problem. I need to and I needed to understand that not everybody is going to be accommodating. You have to make your own place. So when I understood that, after that everything is nice, everything is good. If you try to speak Ukrainian, they help you with it. <laughs> so it's that. <laughs>
starting a war seems very crazy to be honest so i also personally did not believe that uh, the war would start so the day it started like we got a call at around 5 o'clock in the morning saying just check the news uh, there's been bombardments in the kiev region and i remember that day very vividly because one of my friends was traveling to kiev he had a train at like 3 o'clock and we had just dropped him off at the railway station so and we had come back to the apartment and we were just going to sleep and at 5 o'clock we get this news saying oh god the war has started and i remember oh my god he's just going to kiev so it was like it was very tense it was me- the situation was messy it was frantic and it was pretty unpredictable i would say yeah 24th of february it was i was in india i was sleeping and uh, i was re- reading the news and all uh, russia is going to invade and my relative was also calling that uh, where are you are you in india or where are you like i'm in india i'm fine i'm safe so i was like they're not going to invade because they have done this thing before they because when i came here in first year they did the same thing the military came up to the border and they went back so it did happen like two or three years and it was like a, it's a routine thing they come up they do a little bit shots and they go back so it's a very normalized thing from it's happening from 2014 so it was i was like it was not an option they're not going to do it it's nothing so i was sleeping and the first call i got from a very far uncle of mine he called me as like where are you and they're bombing ukraine as like what they are like yes as like okay okay let me because my friends were here the first thing i was like where are they so i woke up and i put on the news it's like it's real they have started it and i called them up my friends and uh, they told us like yeah things have gone south and we are planning to move out so uh i started talking to them uh, twice or thrice a day so getting an update and uh, giving them guidelines giving them numbers that they can they help giving them forms that they they need to fill and uh, helping them because uh, as me have told you that our teachers were still taking our classes so i helped few of my friends <laughs> doing their work up from my home and also told my sister to do their work on behalf of them because i know they were in getting rations trying to uh, do something else so i did what i could do from my side that's what i did and for a week i was in touch with uh, them and until they found, got out of ukraine i was pretty much tense so at that moment we didn't know ukrainian media was not showing anything about the war all we heard was from the indian media that was much later but maybe from the us uh from the us they uh, they got a warning and they gave their citizens also the warning to evacuate from this uh, because there are troops a lot uh, troops allotment outside belarus and something like that that's all we heard there was nothing much this is january we were talking about and february near about after 15 february we got to actually got the news that okay this is heavy the, we are talking about heavy t- amount of soldiers and troops so but still like everybody said that we never imagined that it a, a full a full out war is going to go out this is not normal <laughs> for anybody to think and i even i never expected that i still remember the day the just just a day before war i was in hostel i was talking to a junior he he came and he asked the like, didi what do you think didi is a is like a bigger sister you say in hindi so he he came and asked like didi what do you think should we tra- take transfer should we go I'm like no are you stupid <laughs> <laughs> no this is all media this is all media games you don't need to worry about it nothing is going to happen uh, earlier also troops came but they went nothing happened as such why do you think it it's going to happen now he said that no my sources say that they it's going to be a war man like then it's your decision if you know it's going to be war then you should probably go that's best for you but i still remember that i told him that are you stupid 
<laughs> and now I think he he's gone. He he would have said. I mean, he might have told me at that moment in his mind that you are stupid. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. so it was very shocking for me. I tried uh, not to panic. My family was the biggest support system at that moment. My father, not my mom. My mom is too much panic. But <laughs> my father is like, stay calm. You're going to get out. No worries. My well wishes, my good vibrations are with you. Don't worry. You're going to go out. You, you. You just have to stay calm. Somebody will come. They'll take you out if it if it's like that. I have sources. I I am talking to people. You why are you worrying so much? You just have to sit there, sit tight. Everything is going to be. You just have to, you know, take on the panic. This is a lesson for you. Just have to wait and watch. That is what. And everybody around me is like. We have to go. We have to go. No, today this this person is crossing the border. Today that person is crossing crossing the border. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> My father is saying, don't go. And you're saying, and then everybody's everybody actually everybody had pressure from their parents, from their families. They they don't they were not here. They don't know. They are just watching the news and explosions are going off on in the on the news. Maybe I don't know. Some of the videos were from the old wars or something, but it created panic among Indians, and it created panic amongst us, and we were li- a lot of people living together, panicky people. So it was hard. It was really hard, but mm, things turned out pretty good. <laughs> At the end, we managed everything. So the day the war started, like 24th, I had this class in ophthalmology, and our professor was still taking the class, and we were like, we were shocked, like, because we were told that we need to go fill up on rations, we need to fill up, uh, we need to have money enough so that if things go south, we can still run away from here. So the class was still going on, and I was standing in the ATM line, which was like three hours long. And I remember our ma'am telling us, "Ki give me your contact info, give me your where, where you're staying, so that if anything happens, I'll be able to get in touch with y'all." And like the day, the later on days were like, um, all we a f- group of us, like 15 people or 12 people, were staying in an apartment, and we were doing everything together because we believe like if we are together, we'll be able to there will be support there will be a support system so that we will be able to get through this so the, the every day we used to start with this okay what are we going to do next uh, are we going home when are we going home how are we going home we were just thinking about that and we were just like surviving in the situation with air alarms and all everything like that day we still had class but the next day they told us that you have one week off uh, no classes then uh, and yeah we didn't have classes for a week or two weeks um, and then they again started resuming our classes that that was online for that period mm-hmm. but then we came back here in September I came back here in November and since then the classes have been going on offline uh, like we go to hospitals we we, we study yeah. after the invasion started firstly I was in hostel at that moment some of my friends lived in, very few of them, they lived in apartments and they were alone, they were girls. They couldn't, they, so our university has, our hostel has strict, strict uh, rules against outsiders. So they, they won't let them in, only I can go out and stay with them. And they were like, no, we are very tensed, we are very afraid, something is going on, like something is going on, every day is air alarms and maybe it's going to fall on our head and at that moment we were not keen on news like we didn't follow instagram channels or maybe one or two but not we didn't follow telegram news i don't think so anybody followed te- telegram news at that point so they didn't know what is going to happen or what so i had to go so i went i went to my friend's apartment and then i got few more calls they were also afraid i told them okay what we can do we can go to hostel or together or you can come to us 
in the same apartment so they came we were at least i think 15 people living together in a house of six people <laughs> so and yeah we went we stored all the rations and we got food for us every time and we also donated food to the ukrainians ukrainian soldiers they were uh, deploy uh, they were employed over actually this apartment was here was this uh, russian embassy this was the apartment and this was another government building so both sides there were russian soldiers uh, sorry <laughs> ukrainian soldiers it was so the so like we when we got food we gave some to them it was like that and we cooked together there was a lot of fighting among the people <laughs> there was a lot of uh, emotional support we we people were the strength of each other and we were the death of each other <laughs> at that moment <laughs> and our parents well we can't say much because we don't know their situation we're not parents but mm, i think we everybody managed their parents pretty good like we uh, after war the after day the day it started i think after seven seven days yes after seven days uh, we crossed the border March, March. and every day every day there was a group of people cross, crossing the border or who went to cross the border who was stuck stuck on the border and i was so glad at the moment that i every day i decided that i won't go i won't go i won't go i won't go they were forcing everybody like even amongst our group people were panicking and they forced everybody to go let's cross the border it's not safe next day the new could be there you will not know so but the day i decided uh, that okay we can go everybody decided with me that okay we can go that day we went and i had this gut feeling that okay everything is going to be all right as long as we are together and it went okay <laughs> it went great <laughs> it was smooth this new border opened in poland and in the morning i think we were going for hungary hungary border we were going and the same morning i think six o'clock we got to know that there is a new border opened in uh, poland so hungary is eight hours poland is three hours so we went poland and before that the news uh, even our some of our friends were stuck in poland borders they were misbehaved with uh, they were stuck there they walked 50 kilometers there was so much chaos at the poland border that it was very terrifying to go and take the step of crossing the border again but logically we had to do this so we did it and it was very smooth I'm really sorry for the people who couldn't, couldn't, who, who face problems. I'm really sorry for them, but I'm really happy for me and my <laughs> friends who crossed with me, who decided to have patience and who decided that we are going to go together. We do not need to separate from each other. Hmm. So they crossed the border very easily with us. Wow. <laughs> we made it into Poland via, like we reached the border by bus we crossed by by walking and after that there was bus arrangements by a government indian government it was not actually the government i mean they were people were obviously directed under our government but these were ngos working together uh indian N ngos working in poland and all over europe people came together for towards this cause and they helped us there was buses arranged this very big hotel which looked very very expensive <laughs> which i would never dream of going in <laughs> was booked for us i mean obviously they won't give us the rooms because there there were too many people when i reached that hotel uh, so this hotel was about three four hours away from the border in, an, in another city of poland so uh, when i went there i saw this hotel and i'm like wow <laughs> this is life <laughs> so but then when i went inside i saw people and there were mattresses on the floor i mean about at least i think about 500 people were in there 
Indians plus I think Nigerians were also there and over so they had crossed the water as well with people from many other universities other parts of uh, Ukraine also came other students so a lot of people with a lot of stories for how they crossed the border one of her friends were there he was a South Indian guy and he was drugged at the border and he got his passport and bag stolen and he was lying there in the cold for two days out he was unconscious and then he woke up went to the border he was hungry somehow the ukrainian officials helped him and he got into that hotel with us and he used to live with us just downstairs fifth floor i'm sixth floor he was in fifth floor and it was really short i there was literal tears in my eyes after listening that story and i'm like i was so I was so happy that I crossed really easily but then I when I heard this I was like why, why how are people so I mean the people us were so stuck at the border and I was living happily in my apartment however my life was I was cussing at that moment that why the people I like this why I'm living with such people and but then I found out that there are very big problems that I didn't have to face it was very scary ha huh, but the food was very nice <laughs> <laughs> food was very nice and the uh, ngo people were also working 24/7 working shifts for us so uh, my friend there was one my one of my friends and me we opted for helping others so we asked this ngo people that how can we help tell us they gave us this there was this jacket i think uh, this neon jacket that authority people wear <laughs> to know that these are authorities so they, what they do did was uh, gave people a place to live quilts blankets their food managing something for them keeping the place clean so uh, so we had there for maybe um, half of a night and then later on there was there were planes arranged for us by our government so we went there sat on the plane and we went <laughs> that's what happened but i get very good experience <laughs> this was a very very touchy experience mm-hmm. probably going to be there for me for life uh i see in 20 uh, in september i started telling my mother like i, w- I would like to go back because uh, this online thing is not going to be very helpful to me the offline thing is the thing the you can't study medicine online it's a skillful thing that you need to see you need to touch you need to feel and you need to know so it's purely offline thing so you need to do it that way so she was like no uh, you're not going into a hospital so but i made her understand uh, along the months like no i'm going to be safe my few of friends have gone back they are safe i showed them a few video of them like see they are living nicely it's not going to be a problem so she told me like go there okay it's fine you can go but if anything goes south you going to be the first one to run from there i was like okay i'll be i'm long i have long legs i can run fast i'll be the one getting out oh i came in december december 8 i came back and uh, it was via moldova because the the fly zone is uh, not working there is no fly zone over ukraine so i came to moldova by a plane then i uh, came into ukraine by a bus and further also there was bus to lviv so that happened and it was a uh, actually the uh, my decision it got cancelled at to come to ukraine three times two three times and every time i pack i packed my suitcase there was an explosion and i am there outside shopping grocery shopping and doing buying spices for myself and then my friends call me bro we can't go <laughs> like why <laughs> this shivam gupta <laughs> so but it's still my mother calls me every day and tells me that one sentence is always there you could still take transfer 
if you can then take it if you can then take it but since we are fifth year students and only what half a month is left in sixth year we can't take transfers that's the rule of our country so we are bounded by many things we can't go anywhere <laughs> this is the only place left where we started <laughs> Um, my plan after finishing my medicinal year was always to go back to India. Like, so it's still the same. Uh, so I wouldn't say it has thrown me off my track or anything. But it has impacted how I study, how I like how I take things uh, around me. Like I don't take things for granted anymore. I would say. So it has. not changed my pla- uh, path to my future career but it has changed how i look around this world i guess so yeah like um the, the among us students we always used to say that we have 6 years left we have 6 years left we'll see what's going to happen after that but when the war started it's like oh we only have like 2 years left and we don't know what we are doing with our lives we don't, we don't know what is going to happen to us in the future like because everybody was scared to come back to ukraine so uh and there were a few of my friends taking transfers to another country some of them are still in india so it felt like everything was crashing around us and there was nothing to hold on to support like the new guidelines coming up every day were like and new guidelines from nmc or new guidelines from the embassy like they saying be careful and everything so It, it was it was a chaotic few months i would say this it's still a chaotic few months ahead of us but i guess it's manageable somehow i somehow we are managing it's like uh, there's uh, always a psychological uh, thing in your head like like uh, as a perspective uh, studying here uh, is like you're always under a psychological pressure or a, a little bit of stress like you never know when you have to take a bag and you have to get out and uh, you never know the how can circumstances go south so you have to be ready for that thing so that's a risk you have to hold at your head any time and uh, as of my plan my plans were few but yeah i have to change i have planned a lot of things uh, i i need i wanted to give step one uh, Uh, a year ago but there as of because of war there are no testing centers in ukraine available right now and i am i have a license degree getting a degree from ukraine so i think i have to give from here so that's delayed or maybe cancelled i don't know I've, i need to search for that maybe uh, so now i'm focusing on uh, my degree first and then i'll go back to in india and try to make new path mhm every month i study something i was like ah oh, this is interesting maybe i could deal in this it would be nice then next month oh no this is way more interesting but i have something like uh, a cardiologist or maybe a vascular surgeon maybe mm treating patients always come first whatever kind of whatever kind of problems they have if they have mental problems if i'm qualified for that i'm going to give you that i want to give you that because that is what will make me satisfied in turn so that is my motivation and the thing that has changed is earlier i thought that i'm going to be giving you smle which i actually thought that i'll give in this december but seeing as the covid the war i am not studying that much what you need what uh, what you uh, ask from a usmle student i don't i know that i'm not studying that much and i need to do that <laughs> but still uh, now i don't think so that i will see a usmle i will do try i will try definitely i'll try hard if uh, if that happens wow if that doesn't happen i'm going back to india earlier i was not planning to go to india 
but now the regulations have in india have also been changed uh, new exams are coming in it's like usmle usmle step 1 step 2 so it's like next uh, next one and next two i don't know when it's going to come but i'm pretty sure that the moment i graduate this thing's coming <laughs> so uh, everywhere it's difficult i don't i am really i'm confused right now what should i do what for what paper i should study mm say like that i wanted to become a surgeon i think i can become a surgeon the only thing is i'm just not sure how to go on all about it how to process all this information that's going around me <laughs> that's just when i came in first year i was so sure i will going to i will i am going to become a neurosurgeon <laughs> the moment i started new uh, neurology covid happened <laughs> i literally scored that there is this uh, scoring system like every every class you get 5 marks for the questions you've been asked maximum is 5 minimum is, minimum is 2 and i've got two offline classes in covid like before covid two offline classes of neurology i got 5 in both of them and i was so happy wow neurosurgeon on the way <laughs> and then covid happened we went to our hostels beds <laughs> and nothing happened after that <laughs> so it's covid time was very hard <laughs> changed my mind a lot not war but covid mm -hmm. changed my mind a lot <laughs> because war i came prepared i knew what i am coming for what i'm going to get so i am getting that and even beyond <coughs> i think better than what i thought <laughs> but covid <laughs> covid is covid had a setback it gave me a setback it has been like i live in a hostel and it's been great to have my friends around me so like any time anything goes wrong it's like okay there's a call coming like a message coming in like keep everything uh, get your documents together get your stuff together and we are always there you know, we, all of us are there for each other like i there's this incident happening that when i came here in november Uh, two days two days later i dislocated my knee and i was bedridden for a month and that was the time when um there was a lot of light uh, shortages going on and it was it was like it wasn't a it was quite depressing i would say so and i remember that all my friends used to come to my room to be there with me like give me support they were there they were there all the time so Uh, that's got me closer to them i would say and yeah we are always just there for each other over here and it's like small nice community of us it's nice and regarding the uh, situation also like the ukrainians they've also been uh, kind to us they've been supportive they even i think they they are like shocked okay people are coming back to ukraine i would that i think they are shocked that okay they are coming back but they've been good like our teachers are supportive uh Uh, administration is also i guess supportive so they've been they've been i think it's been good the community is nice around us so it's helping us move on <laughs> yeah yes a big a big one uh they are in a lot they do like you don't need to even ask for help they are around any time even a slightest thing happens around you they just call you up or message you up this has like 3 or 4 months <coughs> sorry 3 or 4 months ago there was a rocket strike in lviv and a rocket came near by the city and the air defense took it off but they were like bro it was so close and i was sleeping at that time they called me up and was like get ready there might be a strike you need to store some ration or something or, or you need to maybe go out so be ready so and even this is a hard time here because uh, you are under a lot of stress so just come up talk to them they are good they give you nice different perspective also so they are a bit big strength it's helpful and it makes me happy 
it, this is my happy place i love people here and they are always there for me anything i want any if i am in a slightest stomach pain they are here they are here they help me they cook food for me and they do everything in their power to make me feel homely so that i don't get homesick i don't say that i don't, i want to go home you people are not good or you i am just not comfortable here i'm always comfortable here these are my people and they have they have helped me a lot even if they don't know maybe i don't appreciate them much i might that it could be one of the things that i don't do but if unintentionally or intentionally they have always been there if i am in a sad mood i talk to them i am happy it's like i'm on a zany or something <laughs> cut this part <laughs> No, no, I live busy. <laughs> ah, I'm always happy. Ah, they, these people keep me happy. That's important. See, I was planning uh, on giving my U.S. English Step One, so I did research. What do you study there? And uh, I started that. I go with Boards and Beyonds, Anki Cards, then Step One Book. and uh, yeah that's it till now and yeah step one book is the holy bible so that's what i go with uh, we didn't have a simple medical one. it's a very <laughs> different one what the, what we expected so a story to tell to my kids <laughs>